Let's Tarantino this. Let's Stephen King this. You know what I'm talking about? Not, Andy? Not really. It's where you start at the end and you work your way. Oh, that's how they... Oh, okay, Mr. Shyamalan. You know, Mr. Shyamalan. This is what I'm talking about. Right here. Crispy chicken sandwiches. CJ hates when I say sandwich. A little bit of Napa cabbage. A kimchi relish. A wicked sriracha mayo. What is not to love? Except for the oversized chicken patties that we made. Nah. But there's, <laughs> nah. Hey, Fit, let me show you guys how to do it. Now, before we get to our chicken, I do want to talk about our three-step breading process. Now, this is the classic breading process. It has been around for millennia. Ethan, we got to hang out with Norman Van Aken. It's like fine dining or backyard fry cooks. This is what you do. Flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. Today, I'm using panko. Uh, that is the only difference. It's going to give us a much nicer texture. Uh, so that's all it. Uh, All-purpose flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs. Now that's set up, let's get to our ground chicken. Uh, I don't use ground chicken that often, and if I am doing burgers, caveat, a burger is beef. Anything not beef is a patty. But it just sounds weird saying chicken patty. So you used to be called a chicken burger, or a salmon burger, one of CJ's favorites. Uh, so this is a patty. What I mean is I would never season my beef by adding my salt, pepper, garlic into the mix and mixing it together. It doesn't do well with the beef fat. However, with chicken, it does need a little help. So adding a bit more of the seasoning here or adding seasoning in general is going to really help the, you know, kind of bland chicken. You know what I mean, right, Ethan? Sure. See, he knows. Uh, so once it's all mixed together, it's time to make our patties. This part does get a little messy. Pat it off in the flour a little bit and then into the egg. The flour is going to help the egg stick and then into our panko. Now panko is different than regular breadcrumbs because it's thicker, it's crunchier, it's gonna be a bit more of a dynamic crunch, a bit more of an interesting crunch. Uh, a good bit of oil onto your griddle and then we're gonna pop that down. Let's do this again. These chicken patties might be falling apart a little bit. So just be ginger, be delicate with these. Uh, egg, flour, breadcrumbs, egg, flour, breadcrumbs. Very, very simple. Uh, and that's it. That's pretty much it. If you want to at the end, you can add a bit more oil just to make sure it's nice and bubbly. All right, let's move on to our sauce. Now you could just use mayo and that would be fine. That would be totally okay. But we can take a little bit of extra effort and add some rich flavors. So I'm gonna start with mayo, then some sriracha, a bit of sesame oil. Now here's an interesting one, hoisin sauce. Hoisin sauce is fantastic. It's phenomenal. You can find it usually right next to the soy sauce. Give it a try. You're going to love it. A bit of tamari, which is like soy, but it's gluten-free, not quite as heavy of a punch, and a bit of rice vinegar. Now, mixing all of these things together takes our mayo from a Frankenstein to a Frankenfine. Yeah. Wrong show, and I couldn't help myself. Now, the garnish is very simple. I've got some Napa cabbage, uh, and I want to shred that. You don't want giant pieces of cabbage here. Now, cabbage is a little different than lettuce. Uh, it's not quite as refreshing, but it's more crunchy, which is what we're after. We're after texture here. Uh, so a nice, fine shred on that. And something I like to do the last little bit, just a touch of vinegar or lemon juice, if you have it. Uh, the word salad comes from the word sal, which means salt. So you should be seasoning your greens. Uh, here in this case, we're using the rice wine vinegar to add just a little bit more brightness to it. Uh, I've also got a really fun ingredient. If you haven't had it, you are missing out. Kimchi is the stuff of legend. Legends. I couldn't even say the word. It's so legendary. Legendary. I'm going to treat it a little different. I want to make it into a relish. So I've got the hot kimchi. I'm just going to mince it up nice and tiny. That's it. No rhyme or reason. We're just changing the shape of it. I don't even know if there's actually a definition of the word relish. Is there, Ethan? It's like salsa. I don't know. Every You're the chef. <laughs> That's very honest. Very honest of you. Well, we just made a kimchi relish, and I'm proud of that. The last thing we need to do is just keep an eye on our chicken, flip it over. If you need to flip it a couple of times, that's okay. You just want to make sure the chicken's fully cooked. Uh, we need to toast our buns. I'm using Martin potato rolls. Now that I see the buns right next to the... What did we do, Ethan? These are... I don't think you calculated. These are big. We did not calculate correct. We should have made five patties perhaps was there. it's fine it's fine it's not that big of a deal now it's time to build these mothers so a lightly toasted martin's roll is also something made of legends uh, let's go ahead and add a bit of our sauce to the bottom and some of that napa cabbage uh, if you want to try it by itself and you'll see what the vinegar did to the cabbage it like brightens everything up uh, then we have our beautiful chicken patty our beautiful oversized xl large robust any other adjectives humongous humongo uh, patties, and then some of that kimchi relish. Let's go ahead and, I wasn't gonna, but I'm gonna now, because this is a huge patty. Let's sauce the top buns. 
uh, and, and observe this magic. Look at this. I mean, it's crispy. I wish I had more color now that I'm looking at it. So let's, let's call this one more focused on flavor, not presentation. Although it's kind of nice. Should we cut it? Yeah. Let, let's cut it. Let's cut one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's funny. Uh, I've never eaten a filet of fish but I'm getting filet of fish vibes. Oh, Andy, can you see the layers? It's much prettier when you slice it open like that. Let's just, let's just be real. But the real test, here we go. Hmm. I don't know if you can hear it. The crunch is money. Panko really does give a dynamic crunch. Can I call that a dynamic crunch? Let me know in the comments. People make fun of what I say. The crunch of the cabbage, very different from lettuce. When you kind of find yourself in like the more Asian flavors, skip the lettuce, go with cabbage. It's much more fun. That sauce is money and kimchi. It's a very interesting flavor. Actually off candy, off candy, off John candy. Uh, Andy off camera saying he's never had kimchi. So I'm excited for him to try this. Kimchi is very, very fun. Really cool. Mince it up, make it, uh, make it new. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. This is a fun one. Think of this more as technique where we can take our flavors a little bit further than just ground chicken, uh, add some flavors to it, make a great sauce, have good condiments, pretty easy. Uh, that's it, that's all I got. Thank you all for hanging out. This is Cook, Eat, Repeat, where we'd like to help you become a better cook one recipe at a time. I'm your host, Chef Nathan Lippy, and I'll see you all in the next episode.